this now. The type of equation you have dictates how you solve it. So when last semester or the semester before that, when you solved linear equations, there was a certain way you did that. Yes. Last semester when you started at the end of the course and you started solving quadratic equations, there was a certain way you did that. Mm -hmm. When we did radical equations, you know there's a certain way you did that. Mm -hmm. Same thing with absolute value. So so given an equation, you first of all have to know what kind of equation am I dealing with. And so so far we don't we were this will be the fourth one. You only have four types at this point. So you have to know, okay, it's this one, I gotta do it this way. It's this one, I have to do it this way. Okay? Alright, so with absolute value equations, let's look at a very simple one. So let's look at this simple absolute value equation. Suppose I had this. Alright, I had the absolute value of x equal 3. So remember, absolute value, the little bar, but that expression that's on the left indicates the absolute value of x. Now remember, the absolute value of a number, if it's not 0, what's the absolute value of a negative 7? Seven? Seven. Positive 7. Notice without the absolute value bars. What's the absolute value of 6? 6. No, absolute value of number is always positive, right? Mm -hmm because it measures the distance that that number is from zero. What's the absolute value of zero? Zero. So we take the absolute value of a number, and you simplify that, it would either be positive or zero. So now go back to that equation, the absolute value of x equals three. You can, you can look at that and tell what the solutions are. What do, you, what, what do you think is one of my solutions? Three. three. Because the absolute value of 3 is what? Three. 3. So one of my solutions is 3. Is it the only solution to that equation? No. No. What's another solution? Negative 3. Negative 3. Because what's the absolute value of a negative 3? 3. Positive 3. So x equals 3 and x equals a negative. negative 3. So whenever you have an absolute value equation, the first step, just like with the radicals, isolate the absolute value to get the absolute value by itself. Is this is the absolute value already by itself? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So then you're going to split it into two equations. You're going to split it into two equations. Okay? There's two equations. Alright, now, let's look at the next step. What's the next step? Um, Break it down to two parts, because this is what you're going to do. See this right here? You go here, and then you go here. That's all you do. So, given that to that equation, you're going to rewrite it in two ways. Okay. Two ways. Those two ways are going to be. Can you turn that computer off, please? Mm -hmm. Can you turn it off? Thank you. See, you have to find it also. All right, gonna have two equations. X equal three, and X equal the opposite of this number. Okay, look at the way it looks. You're going to rewrite this without the absolute value bar. You see this one right here? Mm -hmm. And then when you rewrite the other one, all you do is change the sign of that number. So x equal what? Negative 3. Okay? All right, now let's look at this one. Okay, same idea. Now look at the steps. It's very easy. First of all, is the absolute value by itself? Yes. Yes, the absolute value is by itself. Once it's by itself, I'm going to write it into two equations. Okay? Mm -hmm. Now, there's a there's all kinds of different equations. So the, the, the equation you're dealing with dictates what you do. 
So when I get to that point, if I have this, then usually it's a good idea to remember this kind. If you can remember this kind and remember, well, if I have that easy kind, then I know there are two solutions. It's x equal 3 and x equal negative 3. And on this one, all I did was take the opposite. Okay, so look, look at the similarity. Rewrite it without the absolute value bars. So what do I write? Equal 6. So there's one of the equations. So see that? Mm -hmm. The other one's going to be x plus 5 equal a negative, negative 6. That's the other one. You see what you do? Mm -hmm. right. So x plus 5 equal a negative 6. And now notice I went from this absolute value equation to two linear equations. And for us, we're only going to be dealing, when, when we get to that point, it'll be linear equations. So here I subtract 5 from both sides. So what's x? 1. One. Here I subtract 5 from both sides. What's x? 11. Negative 11. Just on, on, unlike the radical equation, you don't have to check these. Just like with, when you solve the quadratic, did we ever check the quadratic solutions? The solutions of quadratic equations? No, we didn't. So at this point, the only solutions you have to check are the solutions to which equation? Radical. Radical. They're the only ones. All right, there's your solutions. If you want to check, you can. Is it necessary? Mm -hmm. No. Now, let me rephrase that. If you're prone to making errors, then you may want to check. All right? But if you're certain your, your, your mathematics is correct, you're fine. So x equal 1. What's 1 plus 5? 6. What's the absolute value of 6? No, oh, come on. We said earlier that the absolute value of a number is always what? Positive or 0. So don't tell me the absolute value of 6 is negative 6. Okay? The absolute value of 6 is what? 6. Let's check 11. Negative 11. What's negative 11 plus 5? Negative 6. What's the absolute value of negative 6? Negative Positive six. 6. So are those correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So again, at this point, the only, the only proposed solutions that we have to check for extraneous were solutions to which equation? Radical. radical. Those are not radicals. Those are absolute value equations. And so you do. So let's do some more. It's not that difficult. So... Let's look at this one. All right, number three. The um, absolute value of 3x plus 2 minus 3 equal 11. The absolute value of 3x plus 2 minus 3 equal 11. What's the first thing I need to do? Can, can, can I go at this point and write the two equations? Mm -hmm. No. What must I do first? Get the absolute value by itself. Mm -hmm. Get the absolute value by itself. Yeah, add three to both sides. Yep. So remember, we got to get the absolute value by itself. So get the absolute value by itself. So the absolute value of 3x plus 2 is equal to 14? Uh -huh. All right. Once you get to that point, then you rewrite it without the absolute value bars, but you end up with how many equations? Two. two. Okay, so notice, notice the steps. You have to at this point. Now what's going to happen is that when you do the worksheet, some of you are going to have things that would be mathematically incorrect. And it's okay in the worksheet to do that so you know which errors are. You're not going to get full credit if, if, you're, if it's mathematically incorrect what you wrote. You use that to help you for a test. But at this point, this is what you should do. You should say, all right, I'm going to rewrite these as two equations without absolute value bars. Notes in all the... So I'm going to do this. When I get to that point, I no longer have the, the absolute value bars. So I'm going to get 3x plus 2 equal 14. 
and the other going to be 3x plus 2 equals negative 14. That's all you can do. And then you just solve the equation. And the rest of this you've had in the previous course. So on the left one, what is 3x equal? Okay. And so therefore, what's x? Four. Okay. So that's one of your solutions. All right, the other one, now I'm going to go ahead and actually subtract two from both sides. So 3x equal negative 16. Then divide both sides by 3. My other solution is a negative 16 thirds. All right, so there are two solutions. So my two solutions are 4 and negative 16 thirds. Now listen, I'm going to go ahead and check the fraction. Now they both work because I, I, I didn't do any errors. So I know that these are going to be my solutions. But, but let's go ahead and just check the fraction. Just to remind you how to do that. Do you have to check? Do you? No, you don't have to check these. All right, go back to the original. Okay, so remember, x is negative 16 thirds. All right, so wherever we see the variable x, what do I substitute? Negative 16 thirds. So look at what we have. We have 3 times negative 16 thirds plus 2, the absolute value of that, whatever that is, I'm going to subtract 3, and I'm hoping that that's going to equal what? 11. All right. In courses we had many years ago, what's 3 times a negative 16 thirds? Negative 16. Negative 16. The 3's divide out, right? Uh -huh. So negative 16. What's negative 16 plus 2? What is the absolute value of negative 14? 14. And what's 14 minus 3? 11. 11. So it works. Okay, so that was number 3. Alright, number 4. Number 4. Okay, you have 7 times the absolute value of negative 7x minus 3 equal 21. 7 times the absolute value of negative 7x minus 3 equal 21. Don't confuse the absolute value for just like parentheses. So, so if, if I had this, That right here, then I could do what to this? Yeah. Distribute. Okay, because that's parentheses. I could distribute. Don't do that here because if, if that seven's a negative and you distribute a negative in there, it's it's not correct. You're gonna get a, you're gonna do the work and you're gonna think that what you end up with is a solution and it's not. So so don't do the distributive property with the absolute value bar. So remember, I get the absolute value bar by itself. So what do you do to that 7? No, what, what am I doing right now to that with 7 the absolute value bar? What's the operation? But what am I doing right now? Sorry. Multiplication, right? This says 7 times. Y'all agree? Y'all read this 7 times the absolute value? What's the opposite of multiplication? Division. Division. So that's why you said divide. Now, someone said subtract. Uh, be careful. That's not 7 plus. Okay, that's 7 times. Are right, you understand? All right. So you got to look at, at the structure of what you have in front of you. 7 divided by 7 is 1. And so I get the absolute value of negative 7x minus 3 equal 3. What's the next step? Thank you. Right, two equations. Mm -hmm. So when I write this as two equations, what do you get? Negative Equal three. And what's the other? Negative Very good. All right. 
So notice the process. Once you get the after value by after the after value more by itself, you write as two equations without the after value bar. So the first one's easy, just rewrite what you see about the after value bar. The second one you do the opposite of x number. It's on the other side. Okay. Now notice I went from this absolute value equation to two linear, linear equations. So once you get to that point, the rest is easy. It's just solving the linear equation. Mm -hmm. So let's go ahead and add three to both sides over here. So I got negative seven x equal six. six. What's the next step? Divide by negative seven. Divide by negative seven. And so what's one of my solutions? Negative six seven. Negative six seven. That's one of them. Okay, over here, what's the next step? Add three by five. Combine like terms, I get negative 7x equal zero. zero. What's the next step? Divide by negative seven. So what's my other solution? Zero. zero. So those are your solutions. All right, number five. So it should be getting a little bit easier. Just same steps over and over. All right, so we have 3 plus 5 times the absolute value of 8 minus 2x is equal to 63. What's one thing you can do with this? Or what should you do? I would ask you this. Can, can you say 3 plus 5 is 8? Yeah. No. Good. Because you remember that idea from the previous course. Because look, if I had this, if I had this, 3 plus 5 times 2x minus 5, let's say, from a previous course, now those are parentheses here, so I'm just trying to relate the 3 plus 5 part. Order of operations, see this is 3 plus 5 times. Mm -hmm. Order of operations, I, I have to multiply before I do what? Yeah. Add. So that's why you distributed first. But remember, you can't distribute here. Mm -hmm. All right? But you still want to make sure you don't say 3 plus 5 is what? Mm -hmm. 8. That's incorrect. But what you want to do is, is remove the 3 first. So what are you going to do? Subtract 3. So I get 5 times the absolute value of 8 minus 2x is equal to 60. Now that looks like the previous problem. So what should be the next step? Divide both sides by 5. So I divide both sides by 5. Oops. I divide both sides by 5. The 5's divide out. Now remember, you got to make sure you write this correct. So all of you need to write what here? What should I write? Absolute. The absolute value. Eight okay, minus eight minus two x equal. Twelve. No, that's division. Oh, Twelve. Right. So that's what you should at this point have. Now, once you get that value by itself, then that's when you split it apart into two equations without. The after value bar. Okay. So when I do that, looks like this. You're going to say what? 8 minus 6 is a 6. Okay, and what's the other? 8 minus 6 is a 6. Yeah. And so notice I went from an absolute value equation to two linear, linear equations. So I'm going to subtract 8 from both sides. Mm -hmm. Now I'm to subtract 8 from both sides. Be careful on the left. On that first equation, what's, what do you have? Negative 2x equal 4. But then you have to divide both sides by negative 2. And so you get one of your solutions to be... Yeah, divide both sides by negative 2. So that's negative 2. That's one of them. All right, the next one. Subtract 8 from both sides. Combine like terms. What's on the left? 
What's on the right? Negative 20. Negative 20. What's the next step? Negative 2. Negative 2. So what's my other solution? Positive 10. Positive 10. Right, so those are your two solutions. Okay. And again, you can check these. It's not necessary. Let's check the, the one that's, that's a negative 2. Let's just check that one. So back to the original. Here's the original. Okay, that was the original. Always go back to the original. So when we see the variable x, what do I substitute? Negative, Negative 2. So I get 3 plus 5 times the absolute value of 8 minus 2 times x. What's x? And I want to see if all that's going to equal 63. That's your question. We'll work within the absolute value bars now. Now you see where inside the absolute value bars I have 8 minus 2 times a negative 2? Mm -hmm. What's a negative 2 times a negative 2? So 8 plus 4 is 12. You all agree? Yeah. All right, so here's what I have. I have uh, 3 plus 5 times the absolute value of 12. And we'll see that's going to equal 63. Well, what's the absolute value of 12? So 3 plus 5 times 12, is that 63? What's 5 times 12? 63. And 60 plus 3 is what? 63. All right, so those are solutions. All right, let's do one more with this. So this will be number 6. Right, you have 2 minus 4 times the absolute value of 2x plus 3 equal negative 18. So 2 minus 4 times the absolute value of 2x plus 3 equal negative 18. Right. Based on all the discussions we've had, what are you going to do? What's the first thing we'll do? Subtract what? 2. Subtract 2 from both sides. You said it's plus 3, right? Uh, or can we look at the minus 13? That's plus 3. So that should be the first thing all of you should do. Don't make the mistake and say 2 minus 4 is a negative 2. Because we know that that's incorrect in terms of the order of operation. So 2 minus 2 is 0. Now what is left on the left side of the equal sign. Negative, negative 4 times what? 2x plus 3. Absolute value though, right? And that's equal to negative 20. Negative 20. All right, so that's where I'm at. Just follow the steps we've been doing. What's the next step? Divide both sides by negative 4. Divide both sides by negative 4. Just like this. And so negative 4 divided by this negative 4 okay. is 1. 1 times the absolute value of 2x plus 3 is still the absolute value of 2x plus 3. Notice you got to be careful in every little step. You're going to make a mistake. On the other side, what's the negative 20 divided by negative 4? Positive 5. Okay. And then once you get to that point, everything is easy now. Mm -hmm. Once you get the absolute value by itself, you just split it into two equations. So what's going to be the first equation? Good. What's the other equation? Yeah. Negative 5. And then you just solve the linear equation. So we're going to subtract 3. And so I get 2x equal 2. What's the next step? Divide both sides by 2. So I get x to be 1 over here. Subtract 3. I get 2x equal negative 8. Divide both sides by 2. What's the other solution? Negative 4. Okay. So there's your two solutions. So again, uh, when we have an absolute value equation, we've got to isolate the absolute value. 
we split into two equations. And so you just rewrite the equation without the absolute value bar. And on the other equation, you just, you just take the opposite of that number that's on the other side. Right. Now notice for us, the absolute value equation at this point, the absolute value equation, when you split it apart, you can end up with two linear. When we did the radicals, that wasn't the case. When, when you get rid of the radical equation, the, the radical symbol, we ended up with linear. We also ended up with quadratic. So it could be one of uh, those two cases. All right. So that's the end of that one.